All right, fellas, welcome back to another episode. First of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone that showed me love on my latest video, you know, that liked it, that left me a comment, and whoever subscribed, so thank you so much. You know, and you put your value in that comment section. I read every single comment, right, and I try to get back to everyone else, but it really helps me and gives me value, you know, because as you know, I'm from Victoria, and, you know, I'm living in far north Queensland in Cairns, so any tips that you've guys got that you put in that comment section, it really helps me out a lot, so I love you boys, and I love you girls, so thank you so much for that and also I want to give a massive shout out to Adam Charlie and Paul I went on their property and they taught me so much about sugarcane and I hope this video brings you some value as well whether you're from Victoria whether you're from Cairns anywhere around the world so hopefully you enjoy that um, and make sure you stay tuned because in this video I am gonna try a raw sugarcane for the first time never tried it before so make sure you stay tuned for that all right to the video this video is all about mud crabs so I have never caught a mud crab in Cairns yet never have so what I'm doing is I'm using crab pots only to try catch excuse me to try catch mud crabs if we catch mud crabs Alex wants to do this recipe but make sure you stick around in the video because she's going to explain what recipe she wants to do with the mud crabs and I'm not a hundred percent sure I should do this recipe let's go all right boys so before we leave here there was a lady with a boy she's retrieving her pots so I'm gonna wait for her for like five minutes see if she's got any mud crabs if she has it's gonna jay us up for the video so let's stick around for five minutes hopefully she's got monsters that's all we want to chase monsters she went right in there look how low the tide is now super low boys we're gonna walk in there really quick before we start the video put down in the comment section too if you like this type of video we're going in how'd you go Nothing? Where'd you put them? Just here? That's like my pot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've had three stolen here, so we've got to watch them that way too. Oh, really? Mm. I've heard that people stealing crabs at pots. Annoying. It really is. Did you get my glasses? How long did you leave these pots out? Oh, a week and a bit. That's fishing, isn't it? <laughs> I, think I knew there'd be nothing in there because they would have got out by the time or someone would have. Tip them out. Tip them out, okay. Yeah. There's no bait left either, is there? No. I was hoping to catch a baby croc. Have you ever caught a baby croc in a crab? Yeah. Huh? yeah. Oh, you have? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, they're cute. Her boat like broke down. I was just telling everyone, like her boat broke down. She's here trying to take her kid out and like that motivates <laughs> me. So there's no excuses for trying to get out there and go fishing. So Thank girl you. power, Thank well you. done. I take my hat off to all you females out there that come out, that give it a crack, even if you have got kids. I respect that and that motivates me and it should motivate you sitting at home. It's not all about catching fish, it's all about having fun. And this is coming from the worst fisherman in Australia. So we're here with Charlie today and Charlie is a sugar cane harvester, is that what you call it? Yeah, contractor or Con farmer or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So how long does this take to grow? Well, it usually takes about 12 months. Uh, depending on soil types, weather, all that sort of stuff, so it's a little bit involved in it, but typically around 12 months. So. What wildlife do you get eating it? Just feral pigs smash it, cockatoos, they love it. And um, wallabies will eat the short little green shoots. Because I've seen even a lot of these birds hanging around as well. What have been waiting, hanging around for? And they wait for the bugs and frogs and little rats and mice and stuff to come out. So, oh. Like that are hiding inside it, yeah, like so, in, in the, okay. Yeah, so every time we stir it up, all the bugs come out, bang, they smash them all. A little rat comes flying out, a little gravel. I've seen them birds eat a rat two inches long. Really? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, they're mad. So they'll, the big, big eagles will swoop down and grab them with the hawks that all they're hanging around for the ones that are dead on the ground sort of thing, so. Okay. There's a lot of bandicoots in here. And how do you know once they're ready? If you've been around the area long enough, you've probably seen sugar cane with flowers on them, white flowers. Another way is the tops. See how the tops are starting to yellow off a little bit now? So if you sort of look over in the paddock over the other side there, you can see it's very green, like dark green. Yeah. There's even a little computer there, it tells you. That's the GPS, that's that's for for your, for your line. Well, we've got a couple of new farmers that wanted that system put in place so that we can stay straight on the rows. Because when they plant, you see that the hill, the way the paddock's hill, so the cane is actually in the middle of the peak of that hill. What's something that people don't know about sugar cane? I think it's been in this area for 150 years, probably plus, I think, is it a guess? Mechanical harvesting's probably been around 
since the 70s, I suppose. Otherwise, before that, they were cut, all cut by hand. Cut them, um, so they did all this by hand. I wonder how long it would have taken them to cut. Oh, it would have been a, would have been a big day. So some of the some of the older farmers will probably probably be able to tell you. Like it wasn't that long ago they were hand cutting. So thank you, Charlie. I appreciate you taking out the time and speaking to us. So I appreciate that. Thanks. No worries, Luke. Right at any time. So what we're actually going to do, we're going to try some sugar cane really quick. I've never tried it before. So is that all full of sugar? This will be about 15% sugar. That's how they used to do it in the old days, Luke. And how long have you been doing this for? Well, my, my father started the farm here in 1950. Jesus. So I've, I started back on the farm in 1977. You have to chew that. And how do you do it? You just chew it? You just chew it. That's it? Yep. Eat it like you can eat it, yeah, but if you spit the fiber out. Oh, no, it's got sugar, it's sweet, isn't it? Mm. So, by the time they're finished with it, yep. what do they get out of it? They get raw sugar crystals, yeah. So, so what happens just gets crushed in the mill, okay. And that whole stuff that was in the bin there before gets pushed through rollers and squeezed really, really tight, okay. And a, a, the juice runs out. See the juice? Oh, yeah, look at that. What's that juice? Is that what they yes, make it out you, of? You lick that. Mm, that's sugary. It's, <laughs> Isn't it? It's sweet, all right. That's, that's raw sugar. So that's what goes in the trucks, in the cans, into the big bulk sugar terminals, into the boats and off overseas to the refineries or down south to the refineries. And the mm. refineries actually turn it from that brown sugar, okay. raw sugar, into the white sugar you buy on the shelves. The planting process, same harvester, Yep. Puts it in the same bins. Okay. Then it goes those from instead of going in the in the the little bins that go to the mill to yep. get crushed, take them to the planter. And the planter is a machine that takes these it cuts into the links about or just won't cut your leg off there, Luke. So you're right. So plants that in a drill, an open drill behind this the planter. The planter opens the ground up, these things drop in it. Okay. Then it sprays it with fungicides and chemicals so that yep. it doesn't rot. Puts a little bit of fertiliser beside it and then covers it back over with about 50, 60 mil of cover. Then after it's sat in the ground for 10, 12, 14 days, those little eyes go boing. And then that forms its own new stick of cane with its own feeding mechanism, the roots okay. and that. So the same here. What that looks like over there. So that's been planted. Okay. And you go and see where all these little eyes have come up out of the ground. And oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It costs about four thousand dollars a hectare to plant. Is that like expensive? Like oh, it's terrible. I planted sixty hectares this year. Gosh, quarter of a million bucks. Jesus. Yeah. Fertilizer's double, and to use a lot of fuel. You know, my big tractor burns. Uh, what does it burn? Forty liters an hour. So ten hour a day is four hundred liters. So. See, so what do you go through a day? Four hundred liters. And what is that? Petrol or diesel? Diesel. Diesel. Yeah. And that's two dollars a liter. So that's eight hundred bucks of diesel a day. And the big machine, like the harvester, that'll be burning two and a half times that. Unreal, isn't it? Mm. And it, it's just how everything's just fucking shooting up now. Yep. Fuel, yep. everything, Fuel groceries. Everything, yep. oh, yeah. Right. No, so it's an interesting plant. It's one of the most complex plants on the planet. Scientists still don't understand all the bits and pieces that it does, but that stuff that's in the bin there that's harvested, that stuff that's in the bin, yep. after it's gone to the mill, you can actually make about 140 different products out of it. Biodegradable plastics, um, women's cosmetics, mm -hmm. to building materials. Sorry boys, we're out of battery. Paul has to shoot off and have his lunch. So we've been in cans now for three months and I haven't caught a legal size mud crab. And we've been hanging for mud crab also. Yes, the last time we had a mud crab was in Mackay and it was like six months ago, probably more. So the plan is for today, I've got four, mud, four pots that I want to put out. I don't know where they get mud crabs in cans from. Last night was pissing down rain. So I know that's a good sign to catch monster mud crabs. So if I do catch crabs, Alex wants to do a recipe, but she wants to do like this patty. Look. Like a patty. I want to do this. It's like a patty and it's got like mayo in it, like parsley, like lots of seasoning, like and all the crab meat in it. That's like a, if you're Maltese and watching this, it's like a pipetti, so to say. See the thing that worries me with that, right? And by the way, I just want to catch a crab. I want to boil it and I want to get like the massive claw chop it, bang it open, just and just it. eat it like a lollipop, dip it in some sauce, eat it like a lollipop. Like everyone does, right? That's the thing that I want to do. 
just want to try something different. To do that recipe, you need like how many mud crabs do you need? Like half a pound of meat. So what, two mud crabs? Yeah. Probably more. No, probably two enough. So two mud crabs. So if I get four, you'll let me do it. We'll do the recipe. I don't know. We'll see Plus, what happens. We've got to do the recipe. If we get two, we might do the recipe. We'll see what happens. You know what so it is because we went to Cardwell and we had the mud crab burger at Cardwell, and it really disappointed me. That now I think that I know how I would want the burger to be, that I want to recreate this patty. <laughs> I reckon it'd be nice. I, think it would I just don't know if I could spare you a mud crab. I've been waiting six and a half months. Like I just need a mud crab. We've got two days to catch mud crabs. Let's go get the boat ready. We are in the shed. We've got everything in here ready. I don't know if I should take any rods because I'm just I just want to strictly focus on catching mud crabs, basically. I've got the bait sorted, which is good. I've got the carcasses from last time that Connor and I went. Hopefully they don't stink as bad, but you want them to stink to attract all the crabs, yeah? Um, we're pretty much ready to rock and roll, man. The tide is like a mass, it's like a king tide, so now it's coming down. So we want to get out there as soon as we can because we want, obviously, to go as deep as we can in the mangroves, throw the fucking crab pots in and then leave them and then see what happens. Um, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Alex just yelled out, two mud crabs. Well, I'm trying. You can't make a pregnant person feel like mud crab and then not give it to her. It'll make me sick if I don't have it now. Pressure's on. You gotta catch him. Well, well. See? If I don't get mud crab now, baby won't be happy. And look, there's no wind. It's perfect at the moment, man. And it was meant to be blowing today, so go. Oh, that stinks, bro. I don't know how many carcasses are in here. We might just take them all. I'm gonna quickly run into the chemist. I need Bushmans. I've got no Bushmans at all. You ever got the bigger one of these or that's it? I think that's it, so. Oh, we get these ones. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. I don't know where to put these pots, so I just don't know. We're gonna, as we go, we're just gonna take it as it comes, boys. All right, boys, let's go. Let's dump this first pot. Put down in the comment section what's your preference for bait. Fellas, the wind's coming through. Let's see how deep we can go on these arms, eh? I'm just scanning around for crocodiles, man. So you're gonna be careful out here. Hopefully we don't get stuck out here because the tide going out. It's one thing we're gonna be careful of. I can't believe the wind as you get out here. I get a lot of messages from you fellas saying, Luke, you've made me want to go fishing. Uh, but you've made me want to start a YouTube channel. Go and do it. I sacrificed everything, Alex and myself. You know, we're from Victoria. Four years in the making, and don't get me wrong, it was hard. We sacrificed a lot. You know, and still, we're still sacrificing today. We lost money, we sold everything to be happy. And let me tell you something, and I've said this before, I'd rather be, I'd rather have nothing and build to something that's gonna make me super happy and, and, and enjoy the rest of my life doing then do something and make a shit ton of money that's not making me happy. Life is about having fun and enjoying it and looking like a dickhead, making mistakes. All about learning, so go and venture. So don't be scared to get out of your comfort zone because that's when it's really gonna happen for you. Life is all about experiencing and having fun. Not, not, not sitting at a job every single day hating what you're doing. Fuck that, and if you're in that situation, I know what it feels like because I was doing that for many years. I was doing something that I was just miserable and depressed. Like I said, I was making good money, but I just was like, what am I doing? I'm not even enjoying this. Why am I getting up early in the morning? I used to be depressed. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I hated what I was doing, but I was so deep. I was tiring. I had so many jobs coming through. I had so many mistakes happening. I had so many... Life's not all about that, man. But if that's what you're about and that's what you want, pursue it. But if you don't want to do that, you can turn things around. And don't get me wrong. Like I said, I'm not making all this money. But I'm having fun. I'm out today just exploring fucking cans. I'm in cans right now. I'm, I've just literally 
flipped over from one side of Australia to the other. And I'm telling you, I'm not smart. Right, they put me in a fucking hope class when I was in year eight. A hope class in school because I couldn't, because I was, well, I'm, because I'm not smart. Okay, so if I can do it, it'd be very easy for you to do it, bro. Believe me. Now let's go get these crabs, eh, boys? We found an arm here. That's where I'm looking to go. All right, we've come into the first arm. See, now the nerves start kicking in, like I tell you, boys. Here we go. All right. You know, I've had crocodiles, no shit, jump off banks and land in front of my boat, man. But I think I'm gonna get, oh man, how far up can we go in his hump? What's it up there? This is gnarly, boys. Oh shit, what was that bubble? Something just come up and went down. Anything on the sound? Oh fuck, see birds even scare me here boys. Oh, this is hectic and I've got this bait in here man. I should have got it ready. So I was like, muckrat, 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 muckrat. What is it? It's a mud skipper. It's a mud skipper bro. It's just giving me one of these feelings now, yeah? It's still deep, it's like I'm over a metre deep here. This is sick. Oh, it just gives me just a feeling. You wouldn't believe, bro. What was that? I'm gonna tie up to this tree and get ready. Right here. Can you believe I'm in Cairns? It's just mental. I just can't believe I'm here. Stinks. Wash my hands quickly. Do you know how bad that is to do? Tap the water, brings the crocs in. Fucking sound I hear, I'm getting like a, a jump. Oh, we've got one in. That midge is avoiding me, which is really cool. Come little fishy, come to me, happy we will be. Ta -ta. One in, three more. Let's see how. Let's see how far we can go up. Nerves are calming down now. Feeling a bit better. Till I see a fucking monster croc slither down this mudslide. It's getting a bit shallow. 1.4 meters now. But we've got to be careful because if we go out too far, right, and the tide's dropping down, it's gonna really, really fuck us up and I do not want to get stuck out here until the tide comes up. With all this bait on the boat. So we've got to be quick. Let your imagination just run wild and go do it. Do we put all four pots in this arm? What do you think? Put down in the comment section. If you're in my situation right now, would you put all four pots in this arm? Feeling even you now. Still got water under us, we're just gonna be quick. We've got last one last one to go. Oh my god, this is scary bro. There's gonna be barrow in here. Put down the comment section, boys, if you think there'll be barrow Monday in here. <laughs> Let's get out of here. I just pray that that pays off, man. That pays off. All my bet, like everything is in this arm. I've betted everything on this arm, so hopefully it works. I'm just for fisheries. We're just doing research on recreational fishing. Do you yeah. Mind if I ask you a couple yeah, that's, of questions? That's fine. Were you out fishing? So the fishery lady said that the, everyone's been going out, but most of people are putting out crab pots and coming back in. Now, going up that arm, I didn't see any other crab pots in that arm, so we've, I think we've got a good chance, unless no one puts them in that arm because there's no fucking crabs in there. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's either one or the other, really. All right, fellas, we've just made it out. We've got a bit of an issue. My sound had just stopped working. So it powers up, and then it just turns off. Fuck, and hell. It's not a good problem to have, is it? I had all the pots marked on the sounder, so. Anyways, I gotta fix it when I get home. So what we're gonna do is, we are gonna go 
to the first, the very last mud pot, uh, the crab pot that we put in and make our way back, all right? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that we have crabs in there. Fingers crossed, boys. I don't even know how deep it is now and yeah, it's just a pain in the ass with no sounder, isn't it? I had a, yeah, it is what it is, boys, it is what it is. I've got ice in this esky, we're ready to go. But pray, pray for me, boys, pray for me. Please be a mud crab in there. We've been on a dry spell, man. We need something. I can't remember where I've put them now. Okay. I keep looking, I suppose. All right, we're coming up to the last crab pot that I put out. How the fuck is it empty? It's empty. How does that happen? That just doesn't make sense. It was completely empty with the bait out. Uh, I don't know how that happens. That was the furthest one up, so... It just doesn't make any sense, man. Don't know. And we're coming up to the other one, the second last one. Let's go. Nothing. Fucking joy is a bone. Mm. Two out of four. Zero. Alright, let's go check the other one, boys. <laughs> My heart hurts. There's the third. Nothing is wrong. Man, nothing too. Three. Nothing in them. Yeah, that sucks. Alright, we've got the last one to check now. We're coming up to the first one now that we've put in, so. Water, hopefully, God, hopefully. You know what? There's actually one in there. I don't even think that's a mud crab, man. Come on, bud. Let's get you out. One. This is all we got to show. Put you there. I'm not going to give up. Yeah. I'm hurt. <laughs> I'm on this dry spell, man. Uh, let's go and I don't, know, I don't even know where I'm gonna. I was so confident that I would have at least one legal one in here. Uh, but that's fishing, boys. You know, it's no good crying over it. Let's just push forward, eh? Mm -hmm. 